Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it, man. So today I want to talk about something I got from a vendor. This was sent to me by Treatix, and we're going to take a close look at this in a second. This is the Treatix USB cable tester. And I did a video on the original model that I had several, several months ago, and... Um, it was a great device. It will let you plug in your USB cables and then it will light up with which lines are active and what signals are being sent. The upside was it showed you that clearly. The downside was you had to have the manual open to decode all the lights. So this new version, which we're going to take a look at today, has an LED screen or LCD screen and it will tell you what's going on with the cable. So I'm going to switch cameras and we're going to get right into tinkering with this thing and looking at some random pile of cables I pulled out of the drawer. Stick with me. All right, so here is our device right here. And it is not very big, about the size of your palm, but you could have guessed from the box. And it comes with this. This will come with a battery in it. It has a little plastic wrap on it. You need to take that off. On the back of this, it tells us about our inputs and our outputs. The device itself will run off of a AAA battery, which they provide, or you can use USB-C 5 volt power to run the device, either way. And this little switch either turns it on for the battery or turns it on for USB-C. So if we turn it on to the battery side, you can see the screen powers up and it tells us to connect the cable. So that's kind of off and saves the battery and it'll only take power from this USB-C. Now, you have multiple USB-Cs on this thing, so you need to pay attention to this, the markings on the back of it. And it tells us over here that this is USB out, either type A or type C. And if we look here on the bottom, you can see we have all these wonderful connectors down here. And we have micro B 2.0, micro B 3.0, type C, mini B, and lightning. I can't find any lightning cables anymore. I think I gave them all to my kid. For her older iPhone, I don't have any at the moment. So when you do any testing, here is your, your A connector over here and the C connector you would use to test. This one is strictly to power the device. Very important safety tip with this, and this is the same as the older model, don't plug this in the computer. This is for connecting a cable to this device only. This does not go to a computer at all. So don't hook it into your computer. You'll probably make something not work right. It comes with a manual, which you can see here. And it tells you basic information, product information. Don't use this in the bathtub. Don't lick the shiny metal bits, that kind of stuff. And then it goes into some detail about what I just mentioned, the battery, the temperature range, what the ports are. And then our basic tests we can perform. There's four functions that we can perform on any cable setup. So a basic function, an internal cable, internal resistance, and type C E marker read function, which is specific to USB-Cs. This is interesting and it's probably too small for the camera to pick up. Um, but it explains here on a basic function test what this is telling us. So data transmission, USB 2, USB 3, and then PD, uh, whichever version of PD this cable may or may not have. It also talks about the data transfer speeds and power limits on power transmission for PD cables. So that would be the USB-C style cables. All right. Then it talks about the internal cable test and it will show us the pins that are in use. For that specific style of cable, you can see here the different cable styles. This is the USB-C one. C to C gives you this display because there's a lot more pins in uh, a C cable on both ends. So it shows us all that information, and it's a good reference to have. You don't really need it if you're just um, testing cables to see what they do. Will this work? Does it send data or does it send power? Does it send both, you know? And then here, internal resistance testing is the third function, and it will tell us what the resistance to the cable is and whether the data cable housing is grounded. And then the Type-C e-marker read, 
and it will tell us what kind of cable it is, what it supports, wire delay, wire length, wire speed, the vendor, some other hardware related information, which is supposed to be part of the USB-C spec. And then back here, it gives us a little bit more about Thunderbolt cables, which is Apple's uh, version of USB-C. Uh, so Thunderbolt 3 and 4 are USB-C style cables. Um, weird fact, Thunderbolt 2 ain't. It's the same kind of connector as a mini display port connector style. Uh, Apple has to be special, right? And I like Max, the saying. And then it shows us here about USB 2 down here at the bottom, what the uh, information is here on a USB C cable that supports USB 2. And some more warning stuff, and then it flips to other languages. Now, what we're going to do is I have a whole ton of cables that we can take a look at. So I'm going to grab them and we'll plug them in and see what they look like. So the first cable we're going to give a quick test is the, uh, this came with my microphone set, I believe. So we're going to plug this guy in down here at the bottom and then not on the power side, but on the, uh, the USB output side. And then it will tell us our functions on the cable. And we can see that this cable will do data transmission. It supports all the way up to the USB 3.2 spec and it supports PD 3.0. So this cable will transfer some juice. And then here are our pins in use, which is pretty much everything except D plus and D minus there. That D plus and D minus, that one is in use. And here's our cable resistance test. And then here is our E marker and it says this is a passive cable with less than 10 nanoseconds of latency. This will handle up to 20 volts at 3 amps, so 60 watts. This is USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabits, the vendor ID, and hardware information. So that's what I know is a very nice USB-C cable that came with my microphone setup. So let's grab another cable. This is an AC cable that is Bose. I think this came to charge my earbuds. So we'll plug this guy in here. We'll plug it in the right way. And we'll plug it in here. And we're still on the e-marker test. I don't expect this will work. Yep, because this is not a straight up USB-C cable. And this says this supports power transmission and USB 2. So this doesn't support PD, which I think is a function of the the C connector doing a specific, a specific thing. All right, so let's try another cable. Here is a red USB-C cable of, I'm sure it came from Amazon. Plug that guy in, see what we got. So doesn't support PD according to this and doesn't support USB 3.2. This supports USB 2 speeds. So. 450 meg, I think, on USB 2. And it does support power transmission, but it's not going to support the uh, PD spec at all. Interesting. So all USB-C cables are not created equal. So here is a USB micro connector. Let's plug this guy up and see what it tells us about that. And it says this only supports power transmission. So this is one that will annoy the daylights out of you when you try and get something to uh, connect to your computer and this little sucker doesn't work. And of course it's not going to do anything because it's not a type C cable. Our red cable, uh, let's go back to our red cable real quick. I don't remember if we went to the the USB-C cable test. The e-marker test. No e-marker chip. Which is, I assume, why it doesn't support PD or anything, anything fancy like that. Alright, let's see what other cables we have here. 
So this is that guy. And these were common on external drive connectors. So let's plug this in before USB-C became super prevalent. And let's plug him in over here. And see what we got. So data transmission, USB 3, and power transmission. And if we go to the next one, this shows our connector. This is a micro B. That's what it's called. I couldn't remember. Micro B 3.0. And it supports all those pins except the ID pin. And of course, we can get our cable resistance. And that's about it it's not a C cable. All right, guys, that's about all the cool stuff we can do with the Treatix USB cable tester. I will put a link, an Amazon affiliate link to this in the description below. The channel gets a little bit of revenue if you buy one through the link. It doesn't cost you any extra. And again, this was provided to the channel by Treatix. We appreciate the fine people at Treatix sending this out to let us test it. Guys, that's all I've got. I think this is a cool device. This is currently listed on Amazon for $45 with an 8% off coupon. So you can save a little bit of money and have what I think is a very good piece of test gear that is not going to take up a whole lot of space in a go kit or a toolbox or whatever. Anyway, pretty cool device. Hope you got something out of the video. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. All that's in the thing below. There's a bell below if you ring that you'll get notified whenever I post any new videos. Guys, I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day, 73.